Hello and welcome to Music City Mix. I am Chris Will Height, and this is Donnie Nolan, and we are your hosts on this journey through all things Middle Tennessee. From politics to sports to renovations and real estate, we cover it all, all while enjoying a nice glass of bourbon. So pull up a chair, crack open a bottle, and join us on this one. Let's go. Got a, got a little bit different. I'm not enjoying a nice glass of bourbon. I'm enjoying a nice <laughs> silver bullet <laughs> well i'm not either i'm enjoying a nice uh coke zero in a glass so uh <laughs> that's the most plasticky looking glass i've ever seen ah uh, man it's a it's a throwback to the uh days when we used to go to theme parks with the kids all the time so uh yeah, yeah. it's all good but hey we have a ton of news today and that's why we're coming to you on a monday titans free agency has started big big Signing some releases, some people letting go. I mean, all around the league, not just for the Titans. The league's been pretty crazy today. I mean, we we've seen some 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 signings that we kind of thought would happen. We saw some uh, we saw T Higgins say, "I don't want to be a, a franchise going to trade me." Um, you know, it's been a it's been a wild day. But for the Titans, we have three big signings and two big releases i guess or or signed with somebody else and it looks like the third signing's not far away we'll start with um the latest which was uh their cornerback with uh chidobi awazui and yeah, I'm probably I probably <laughs> probably butchering that he's from the Bengals. he was a all pro there i mean cornerback's been a major hole for a few years I thought this was a good signing. I mean, it, it's definitely a needed spot. What do you think? Man, well, I'll tell you the truth, man. I'm really surprised we haven't gotten more people from the Bengals, honestly. You know, I figured it would have been all kind of folks wanting to jump ship and come on over here. Right. But, uh, man, I'm happy with this. I'm I'm, I'm very happy, really, with all of the signings we got today. Um, but, um, hey, good job on trying that name, though. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, I got I got another one I got to I gotta go. We got – D'Amico Autry and Aziz Alashir both yep. look like they're leaving um, and going somewhere else. I'm pretty disappointed about Aziz. He played a great year last year. I mean, uh, phenomenal. I hate that we're letting him go, but I do understand. I mean, free agency is free agency. Um, but reloading on the front line with the top free agent on the line, the top free agent was Lloyd Cushenberry out of uh, Denver, and we got him. So that makes me really happy. Yeah, the whole line's looking a heck of a lot better. And then, of course, my favorite uh, my favorite new add-on from today, you know, we just talked about a second ago with Tony Pollard. Oh, man, got him running back there. You know, I'm I'm uh, I'm sad about the fact that we probably aren't going to keep Henry. I guess we yep. all really yep. knew that. With Pollard coming in, Henry's gone. I mean, that's, yeah. that's just a given, right? Yeah, um, some people are saying maybe him going to Dallas. You know, who knows? Yeah, I think Ball it was a done down deal. There. He bought a house down there, so kind of figured that's probably a done deal. But I'm excited about Tony Pollard. I actually had him in on my fantasy team this past season. Um, you know, he he did a great job, and I think he is going to fill that position very nicely. Uh, you know, I'm still I'm still not on the Levis train. You know, uh, sure. You know, so hopefully this season changes my mind on that. So at least gives me a good reason to cheer on the offensive side when I'm not extremely happy with quarterback, but you know. Well, I mean, I think this is a chance for, you know, the new staff to put a mark on the team. Um, but adding Cushionberry really kind of opens up that first round pick to maybe you don't go tackle left tackle with Joe Alt. Maybe they do jump up and get Brock Bowers or if Marvin Harrison is still there. Maybe they pull the trigger on that. I mean, adding Cushionberry gives them some options that they didn't have. And I think Brock Bowers would be an excellent option for our for, – I mean, the fact that he's scheduled to go so far – or thought to go so far in the draft is crazy. That I mean, that kid is an absolute beast. Yeah, I mean, we've got Chig, and Chig is a great tight end. But Chig is not Gronk. He's not Kittle. He's not Kelsey. He's not – Yeah. Tony Gonzalez, I mean, and and Brock Bowers has the ability to be, I mean, he's got the ability, the size, the strength, the speed to be any of those guys. So, uh, you know, 
if you get a chance to pull the trigger, I, 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 I would think they would probably come closer to pull the trigger on Marvin Harrison. Yeah. But if they feel they could trade down maybe four or five picks and still get Bowers, they might do that. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. It'll be a, it'll be a fun time. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the season. I mean, I really am. And that, and that's been a while since I've been excited for a Titan season. You know, of course, I'm still always excited about my balls, but um, the Titans have, uh, I feel like they've been letting me down the past few years. It's been hard. To, it's been hard to be excited about it, but uh, sure. this looks like a great off season right now. So um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely got the 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 uh, the makings of it, you know, from the outside. So yeah. we'll see. Titans are playing the free agency game correctly, if you ask me. I think so. I think so. Um, the uh, if you haven't seen some other stuff going on in um, in Nashville, Eric Church, country music star. Recently gave individual deeds to the to the bar that he has, uh, Chiefs, to the people who have supported him throughout his career. I mean, he, he gave it back to the fans. I mean, that's a pretty cool thing to to see. You know, having part ownership in a in a bar to his you know to some of his loyal fans and friends and stuff. You know, that's kind of neat. I think. So so how so how exactly does that work? So what did he just basically make it a? Uh, I mean, um, the fans. I mean, he just gave them part of the part of the business. So part of the deed because he owns the owns the property. Um, so most people think you know, hey, this is just going to be another club downtown. He's like, no, this is going to be our house. I want everybody involved in the restoration. You know, we want the fans to be proud of what they've done and and go on so um it, they haven't released like all the details um like of who I was getting them and stuff but you know he definitely says that uh some of them are def you know part of the part of the building is going to the fans so you know right. well, we'll, I guess we'll see picking whoever he's picking and giving them each an individual deed maybe yeah it looks like just like a, a percentage you know so so yeah. like you know, you own one percent of the deed, and the deed means basically he's going to have to pay you the rent. You know, or you'll get part of the rent, part of the contributions, whatever that is. Um, and we'll that see how it works out. Any joke, man, I mean that that's a six no. story, six story no. uh, building. I'm, I don't know if they're using the whole thing for the club, but golly, oh no, they're remodeling the whole thing. It, they get the whole thing from ground up. He bought the property. Um, he's working with a really good. Um, uh designer um a guy named Rodney Scott and um it, we'll see you know Scott's Scott's got uh, quite a few that that you know have done well and Scott's going to have a um, hell of a queue which will be situated on the on the roof so Scott's yeah. got Scott's got bars and restaurants that are doing well outside of Nashville. You know, they don't need the 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 tourist individuality. So um we'll see. We'll see how this works out. I think it'll be I think it'll be pretty cool. Yeah. You know, I mean he's got the competition with that with Garth Brooks opening up his his bar. So there's a bunch of new ones down yep. there. Of course you know Morgan's gonna be getting his. Yep. There, you know, you've already got big name ones of Kid Rock and Jason Aldean and and uh so it's it's definitely gonna be it's definitely going to bring more folks into downtown. That's for sure. Well, if you are a Nashville fan, you're a Morgan Wild fan, since we just wrote it up there. Might as well talk about it. Got a new album coming out. He's dropping some of the songs. And man, I tell you what, we my my, my wife knows that new song, "Lies, Lies, 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 Lies." Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. She and she called me. She's like, "Look, I already know the song by heart. I love this song. It's a man." So I pulled it up and listened to it. I was like, "All right, okay." Yeah. So that's. That's two. That's I can't remember what the other one was that uh, came out a couple weeks ago. But yeah, man, he's he's got some he's got some good music. I really enjoy. Really <laughs> hey, enjoy. he gonna be the another country another summer banger, you know. <laughs> so he had it last year with uh, with his album, and it looks like we're gonna get another one this year that's gonna be right up there with it. I mean, the first two have been good, and then he snippeted the uh, uh, the other one, the third one. So we'll see. I mean. Dang, I, you you would think he would fall off, but I mean, he's got that Garth Brooks run in him right now, where he produces an album every year and it's just banging. So, 
you know, we'll see how long we can keep it up. Uh oh, I think we lost Chris. Chris's hamster stopped working. Um, so I'm gonna pause this while Chris is Chris refeeds his hamster. We're back. Chris had some uh, technical difficulties. His hamster ran out of food, so he had it to did. give the hamster some food to keep it's it. It's nice running. living out in the country and being away from everything, but the <laughs> the internet sucks. So <laughs> had to go redo the modem altogether. See if maybe that's going to give me a little bit better connection out here. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, if you haven't seen, this is a kind of a local thing, um, and it gave me some good ideas. I saw it. Uh, Nashville is known for the Goo Goo Cluster Bar. Uh, if you haven't ever yeah. seen a Goo Goo Cluster, it was kind of invented here. Uh, that company has created a March Madness premium showdown for food places. Um, I'm not sure what to think about it. I'm really not. It's a, uh, it's kind of a an interesting situation. Um, I don't know how to describe it as as far as like, uh, it's. It's it's got some some different ideas on what you know could or couldn't be Nashville exclusive or favorite food. Some of them I've never heard of. Uh, some of them I have. But the bracket is uh, Andy's candy versus Mocha ban Bonanza. I've heard of Andy's, but I've never heard of Mocha Bonanza. I've heard of Andy's, yeah. Holy cannoli versus Chicky Lu Chicky Licky. Never heard of either one of those. Hey Paisan, which we've heard of, versus Cheerwine. Also heard of that. The Gertie versus Barbecue. I've heard of both of those. On the other side, you got Nina Hot, which is a hot chicken, versus Tennessee Waltz, which is a upscale restaurant. Elston Place Soda Shop, which has always been one of my favorites, versus the Saigon. Also heard of that. Puckets versus the Margu. Heard that. And then the Swanson. This is the, the matchup that I think is the worst. The Swanson versus Loveless. I mean, golly, those are two iconic places right there. So uh, that's that's a, oh, is that's it a, supposed to be what's what's more nashville i mean is that what, that, is that what I, I, it says vote for what you think the most iconic is invites fans to vote for the company's beloved collaborations you know whether it's loveless's cafes biscuits and jam or puskets deep fried brownie sunday you know so it doesn't really say it just kind of Puts it out there and kind of lets you choose from what it looks like. So, well, I we'll mean, see. You know, Loveless is going to take majority of that for me, as far as that, that's concerned. Cheer wine that that'll take majority. Of the I mean, that's going to take the drinks. Goo Goo's yeah, gonna I take mean, candies. well, Goo Goo's not in it. Goo Goo's not in it. Oh, right. They just said that hey, we're sponsoring it. Gotcha. So you know, they're just they're just doing it kind of like a little promotion thing. I, I thought it was kind of neat. You know, just. Gives Nashville people a, a March Madness that's kind of different from from everybody else, but right. Okay. <laughs> what what about what about in other news? Have you seen any other news? I mean, we've got the the college senior that's missing. Um, he's been missing for about forty eight hours. He got kicked out of a bar Saturday night, and nobody can find him. He got kicked out of Luke Bryan's for being too drunk, and uh, he walked off, and now he's missing. Man, no, actually, I haven't uh, haven't heard that one. I thought you were. Talk about the one where the guy got beat up by the bouncer, and I think he ended up dying. There was that one too. I mean, yeah. that that leads us to believe that this this uh, Nashville situation, where we talked about it maybe being a uh, uh, Nashville knockout, <laughs> you know, it might not be a bad idea. I mean, it's I don't a, know. Uh, my dad always said, "Nothing good happens after midnight." <laughs> I mean. He might not be wrong there. It's a, uh, it's definitely a, uh, a situation that we're going to have to see how it plays out. I mean, there's been some, there's been some, some incidents downtown. I mean, as we grow and as we try to fill some of these, you know, parties and 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 you know, bigger bigger atmosphere type things like Vegas, it's going to be a growing pain. I mean, we gotta we gotta make sure that we watch ourselves and and grow with it, and not grow against it so yeah i mean miami's going through it right now i mean they canceled spring break never thought i'd hear that from miami i mean that's just well i tell you, you man there's a there was a video i watched on that and you know a guy just basically going off on on the folks that were causing the biggest troubles down there and and 
you know, I mean, he, he was, he was dead on, man. It's, you know, it just takes a few people to screw it up for everybody. Sure. Oh, I agree. hundred percent. I mean, it, and when, when they say a few people, they're not talking a few people. They're really talking a few thousand, a few 10,000, a few hundred thousand type people. So it's a, uh, it's not one person down there. It's a lot of persons. So we'll see how it plays out. I mean, um, you know, other places obviously are going to do well, but I get it. You know, kids coming down there, they, they said that crime went up, you know, 7,000% during spring break. That is insane. Like yeah, seven thousand percent wherever they live and going down there and frigging, you know, just causing doing crimes, causing causing yeah. trouble, stealing stuff, breaking in places. I mean, it's not paying for dinners, not paying for you know drinks, and just going into a, a grocery store and picking up a bunch of stuff and just walking out. You know, so. I mean, seriously, if, if you don't have any money, then don't go on vacation. Don't you? You don't need yeah. to go to spring break. You don't have any money. Yeah, yeah exactly. This isn't this isn't uh this isn't California. Not everybody's granted a free spring break. <laughs> so so uh, yeah. uh, well, so Yelp did a uh another one of their little survey things on okay. in the uh the top southern restaurants in Nashville. In the Nashville okay. area. I'm so, listening. You no, know, a couple of the a couple of our frequents made the list. Uh uh Party Foul made it in there at number 20. Um, which I absolutely love. Uh, sure. Party foul. I always have Midtown Cafe uh, down there on 19th Avenue came in at number 14, which I love that also. Um, what was the other? Was it, there was another one. See so your top, uh, your top five were um, fire and smoke, uh, which I have not been there. It's a barbecue place, but I have not been to that one. I'd love to check to check it out though. Okay. Um, then Monell's dining and catering on Sixth Avenue. Of course, I'm 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 guessing that most of this went off of off of their reviews, straight off right, straight from right. reviews instead of more of a having people vote on it. Uh, the Southern V uh, on Bu on Buchanan Street came in at number three. I haven't heard of that one or been to it. No. Red Six One Five Kitchen. I have heard of that, but I have not been there uh, on Twenty Seventh. And then number one uh, for the best Southern restaurant was big owls deli on fourth avenue now i was looking at some of the pictures of the food that big owls serves uh -huh. and we are gonna have to go to big owls the okay. pictures of some of the stuff that they have in there their, their category is of course you know southern delis burgers and that kind of stuff but man some of the food that they've got on their on their website is looks amazing so we're gonna have to try out big owls deli I actually think I've Yelp. I actually think I've been to Big Al's. I'm looking at it right now to be sure it's the same place that I think it is. It is, yeah. It's a, it's good. It's good. It is good. I will give them that. Um, I have been to Big Al's. It's it is on Fourth Avenue, and I thought, isn't that that little place that's got bars on the windows and looks like it's kind of crazy boarded up? I mean, it it is. Uh, you know, he's not in the best area of town, but everybody in that area of town likes him. Because he's from that area of town and he's made it on his own. So they respect him. But it is a still bad area of town. So he does still have, you know, bars and stuff. So um, but as far as food, oh, it's it's phenomenal. It's good. I had breakfast there uh maybe two, two and a half years ago, and it was really good. So yeah. But I don't again, know that it's number know, you one. Take but... all that with a take all that with a grain of salt. Because exactly, it, exactly. And it goes off of off of their reviews. Yeah, I mean. I, I looked at Big Al's even has more than a hundred reviews, right? Yeah, so he, he could have a. Perfect I looked time. at a. I looked at a Yelp thing, best Nashville restaurants, and literally had seen maybe three in the top thirty. I mean, I was like, nope, never heard of this one, never heard of that one, never heard of that one. <laughs> Don't know that one. That one's been there less than a year. Can't be the best, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just like, I I don't know I. It, there's some things that I just like there was one that had the Iberian pig up there. And I remember it because of the name and it had like 70 run reviews it's in the Gulch. It's less than a year old. And, you know, I was just like, how can I, how can I believe that? You know, 
Where not, if if you've got something that's got like two thousand reviews or five thousand reviews, all right, let, let let's give that one some some credit, you know, some some credit. But if you've got sixteen reviews, nah, I can't. Didn't I can't you put a Didn't you put a new review in today for I did. Uh, doc page? Where'd you go? I went to the goat. Um, the goat changed up their menu about three months ago, and uh, I'd been wanting to try the pizza. It's called the Mac Daddy pizza uh it has mac and cheese on it all right it has jalapenos it has bacon and barbecue sauce with a, a marinara red marinara and a cheese sauce on top of that it was phenomenal i really enjoyed it like all the different flavors in it um just i think i gave it like an 8.6 and it's pizza i'm not a big pizza guy and hey, got a ton of comments on it and people talking about it so you know I'm gonna give it a eight point three seven five. <laughs> hey, on a scale of crummy to yummy, it was pretty damn good. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, I had somebody comment on the post. It was like the fact that you've got thirteen followers, but you act like you got a million. You got fourteen now. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, hey, I don't act like I got a million. I just. I'm just telling you what I feel. So yeah, right. They all gotta. They all have to have a you know a good experience, regardless of how many's there. Sure. I, hey, I want everybody to have fun. Um, you know. Well, that's it, cool. It, When's your next one? When you when you going to? Um, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. I don't know. Okay. I I've got. I'll be running around tomorrow. Uh, and then Wednesday, I'll be pretty backed up Wednesday and Thursday as far as on job sites. So. We'll see how it goes. No, 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 no promises. I like, I like it to be a surprise. You're like, hey, Donnie posted a pic. Guess where I'm at. <laughs> Guess where I'm at. So, yeah. But hey, if you have somewhere you want us to try out and review, whether it's a family favorite, whether it's owned by you, send us a message. DM us. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube and Rumble. You can find us anywhere. Tell us, hey, I always, if somebody tells me to go try the place out, I'm usually going to go try it out. I've got a guy right now. He's like, hey, man, you got to try this place in Dixon. I'm like, man, Dixon's a long way, bro. That's <laughs> like, a long way. <laughs> this is a long way. But the next time I'm out there, I'm going to try it. I mean, I don't know when that'll be. It might be next week, might be next month. But the next time I'm in Dixon, I've got it on my list. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to try that out because I respect the guy. And he took the time enough to, to text me. Why not? Take the time enough to to enjoy what he recommends. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes, sir. Yeah, but it's, uh, a, it's been pretty quiet up up north side here for uh, you know for news and all. But um, of course, how's Titan, the real estate market going? Is it popping? Because I've heard some good things. Well, I mean, you, you've still got your naysayer media out there. Um, you know that it's I don't take them for much. Um, you know, I I really don't either. Um, I read an article uh, on uh, Yahoo Business the other day, yesterday, day for yesterday, uh, and it was talking about uh, the the problems basically that the real estate market is having. Of course, they declined to uh, drop the interest rate this past time and left it the same, and so they started talking about the you know the the issues that that they're having with inventory with that you know that the country as a whole is having with inventory here in Nashville, Middle Tennessee area. We're at about four months um and so for those of you that don't know what that means basically if everybody stopped putting a house on the market right now everything that we have would sell within four months so that's right. basically right. basically how they figure that so right now we're at four months of inventory well shoot 2022 i don't think we ever made it over 2.9 months the entire year um so dropping the the interest rate um is going to make that worse honestly uh the the inventory um they're they're gonna have to do other things uh along the building side of it whether it's you know getting rid of the moratoriums or 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 decreasing the the amount that they're that they're charging for the materials on the building whatever it is but you have that's not happening right but you have so many people right now that are in a home that bought it within the last couple of years that have a 2.2, a 2.3, you 
you know, three, whatever, whatever that low interest rate was that they right. had. And they're sitting on this and now they've made a bunch of money because their house has gained so much equity because the pricing, the prices are raising so much, but they're still not wanting to jump out and sell because they're trying to think to themselves, okay, why would I jump out and lose this 2.5 interest rate to jump into a six, a right. six, five and or I, a seven. And, and I can, I can that. understand that. I mean, it seems reasonable. Yeah. And so, you know, so dropping the interest rates is going to add more people to the, uh, to the buyer pool for sure. And that's going to, going to keep the market rolling. Um, but until they figure out uh, a way to, to get some more inventory, get more houses built, you know, get rid of these restrictions that they've got going on. Um, until they figure out how to do that, then, you know, the, the country as a whole is going to continue to sure. suffer through that. Now, here in Middle Tennessee, we are kind of an, an enigma uh, compared to everybody else because our market really is fantastic. Um, now, me personally, you know, I'm I'm. I've been doing a heck of a lot. I've been extremely busy. I've closed a few. I've got a few under contract. I've got new ones hitting the hitting the books almost every week. Uh, so the the Middle Tennessee market is 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 hot. It is still Good. the place to be. Um, you know, I know there's people that disagree with me on that, but you know what? Those are the people that, that aren't hustling, that aren't getting out there and doing it. The the sure the uh, people are there. There's people that need you. There's buyers that are out there. There's sellers that's ready to make money, to put money in their pocket that have, uh, you know, made so much equity or whatever. Um, you know, the my my opinion on this, this market that we've got right now is hardest on loan off people who are loan officers because people aren't really refinancing. Sure. Like I say, because majority of them are already lower than what they have. Uh, the ones that are refinancing are people that are trying to take cash out, pay off, pay off loans, that kind of thing. Uh, but the majority general public is not. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the state of it all. You know, we still have our inventory issues. Uh, rates are expected to drop again um, a couple times this year. Will we see the fives this year? Eh, probably yeah. not. Will we see them in 2025? I think Don't so. count on it. I yeah. wouldn't count on that one. But that I can one's... tell you. And I've said this a hundred times in the last six months, as soon as there is a five in front of that percent sign, this market is going to go ape shit. It's going to blow up because <laughs> yeah, everybody that. that's waiting is getting jump in this market uh, because we're, it'll be 2% lower than what we're currently at for somebody with just standard credit, and no extra money and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah. If anybody's got any questions about that, man, I tell you what, I live and breathe this stuff, but feel free to contact me and uh, sure. I'll talk to you sure. more about it. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I know that, I know that I have new, uh, any kind of, any kind of new things going on out there. People wanting uh, uh, new additions or, or yeah, any I mean, kind of I've, renovations. I finished up. Uh, I'm, I'm finishing up a, a house that you're going to be putting on the market in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it'll be finished up this week or next. I just finished one that is a new build um, and it already has an offer on it. It is not even, it's listed as coming soon, but uh, they have a pre-market offer. Uh, it's on the MLS. Um, I have a couple of new constructions that I'm doing some work on. Uh, one of them is yours. You sent to me. Uh, they, they wanted to, they got a deck and in Tennessee, they don't put gates on decks because of codes. Uh, so uh, they wanted their their deck to have a gate, which I totally understand. So uh, I tell you what, you were gonna love those people. They are the they are the coolest. Oh people. yeah, yeah. They yeah. moved here from uh, from California. Yeah, he's uh, a DA. Yeah, old ex DA. Yeah, I you talked know, his, to him. He's a good, he's whole, a good, uh, good guy. His whole thought process, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are like, man, we don't need all these California people moving here, and and uh, you know, we're they're gonna they're gonna change the culture. But you know, the thing is. These folks that are leaving California are the folks that don't like that culture. They're yeah, wanting yeah. this culture. So um, I don't see, but but you're no, going to love these they're, folks. They're, they're yeah, they're awesome. good people. They're good people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm still seeing some of the same trends. I mean, if you're going to sell uh, or you're thinking about selling paint, floors, kitchen, and if you can, master bath, uh, that's the top three or top three or four. 
that's going to change your house. It's going to update it. It's going to give you a fresh look and it's going to separate you from everybody else by 20%. Uh, and I mean that 20% as you get 10% over asking and they're not getting that 10%. They're having to take 10% off. So I think it's a 20% difference by, yeah, you may spend 15 grand, but if you get 30, tell me, tell me what person out there wouldn't say if you spend 15,000 in the next month, in three months, we'll give you 30. Most of them are going to do it. You know, even if they've got to dig into the bank account, maybe take out a, a you know, a, a HELOC or something. It's still a great investment. I mean, well, it's not hard to make sure that they renovate the right things with that 15,000. Right. Because and that's why I tell them, hey, listen, if you want to come in and and gut your house and knock out a wall and and expand the give it an open floor plan that's not going to give you a return on investment you know right paint paint's going to cost you 253 dollars you can get five bucks out of it floors it can cost you three to six you can get seven to ten you know yeah. then kitchen just depends and same with master bathroom you can't always renovate a master bathroom and get money out of it but if it's got vinyl in it and a, a crappy shower and a basic vanity yeah, spend the extra four grand and make that a nice master bathroom. You may get seven to ten out of it. So yeah, right. right. And you know, all about uh, ROI. We we everybody knows. You know, carpet doesn't. It, and I've heard people ask me before. You know, why do you why do you promote carpet? And your know, carpet does not add value to the house. But what it does add is that aesthetic look. When it because because carpet looks good, honestly. And people walk into a house, they don't want to see this this stained up crappy looking yeah. old bird carpet has carpet has the best roi in flooring you can spend two to three dollars a foot for your carpet and you're going to get five no matter what as long as you don't pick red yeah <laughs> right or that baby puke green <laughs> yeah just just go gray fleck nobody notices they they, they look down they're like oh this is new carpet it's soft and you're good yeah so, so, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, uh, so are people still, uh, are people still going with that undulating tile for backsplashes or has that changed yet? It's, they're pulling away from it. Thank God. I mean, yeah. we're still seeing, uh, uh, subway tile, but yeah, the, 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 the crazy doesn't look good when you put grout on it. Yeah. It's finally going away. Um, you still see some eclectic people do it, but overall not so much. Well, that's definitely good. I'm love some of the subway tiles. I I love the basic subway tile, just the straight white with with maybe a uh, bless you by the way with maybe yeah, a, I uh, turned a it off because I had a sneeze in fact, So, but yeah, just the just the yeah the, the white subways with some with some silver or darker grout. Man, I think it. We I mean, just did a we just did a white with charcoal, and we did a gray with white, and the gray with white. Man, that really really popped on those white cabinets. So. Uh, We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, sir. Well, that's about it on my end. You got anything else? Man, I tell you, other than the Titan stuff, it's been a bit, like I say, it's been a slow week news wise. Of course it is just Monday. So, you know, <laughs> that's right. That's right. We were going to try to have Zach in last week. We did have some issues, uh, you know, just one night was too late and the next night we were all busy. So uh, Zach said that he's going to join us. He said, make sure, he, you know, keep his spot warm for him. So he's our yeah, first absolutely. guest, I think. Absolutely. We're gonna try. We're gonna try to be back here Thursday. We will see. We'll give it a shot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, that's it for me. You got anything else, sir? Man, it's been fun. Thanks for talking with me. Hey, and Thank and for if joining us. Yeah, and remember, follow us on TikTok, Rumble, YouTube. TikTok's where you're gonna get the most. In fact, uh, we may even start doing a new series, Nashville Knockout. Uh, I just gotta get the guts to go downtown and brave those idiots. <laughs> i don't mean it you're not idiots you're fun people i love you to death you make me laugh that's for sure all right <laughs> boys and girls y'all have a good night thanks for joining us and uh we'll see you later